in this society, they tell you that really women can do anything they want and that women can act a fool, act a nut, and not get punished. But when we read in the Bible, we see that that's not the case. Women get punished. Not only did they get punished, in a lot of cases they got killed. But in this society, they would say, well, that's too harsh. No matter how much wickedness the woman do, they say, well, they can get away with it. But the Bible says something different. I'm going to read that right now. We're going to read about the punishment for women's wickedness, okay? I'm going to start off in 2 Kings chapter 9, verse 30. And I'm going to start off with Jehu, how he deals with Jezebel's wickedness, okay? Y'all know the story about Jezebel. So we're going to see what Jehu did about her, okay? I'm going to read a couple other things too. We're going to start with this. Verse 30. And when Jehu was come to Jezebel, Jezebel heard of it, and she painted her face. You see that? Did it how she painted her face? That go back to the, what the fallen angels told them about that makeup on the eyes, all right? That's satanic. And tried and tied her head and looked out the window. And as Jehu entered in the gate, she said, Hems of a peace. Who slew his master? And he lifted up his face to the window and said, Who is on my side? Who? And they looked out to him two or three eunuchs. And he said, Throw her down. So they threw her down, and some of her blood was sprinkled on the wall and on the horses. And he trolled her underfoot. Now you see how graphic that is? Alright. Now in today's society say that's too much. That's way too graphic. But see, the Bible will tell you how to deal with a wicked woman. Alright? They threw her off the building and trolled her underfoot with a chariot, okay? And when he was come in, he did eat and drink and said, go see now this cursed woman and bury her for she is a king's daughter. So after, right after he got her killed, he went and had something to eat like it wasn't nothing. Like it wasn't even nothing on his mind. You know what I mean? Then he said, you know what? She's a king's daughter. Go ahead and bury her. Now, who, who can do that today? Who's strong enough to have that kind of judgment against women today? Not many men. But we read in the Bible, that's what it was back then. And they went to bury her, but they found no more of her than the skull and the feet and the palms of her hands. Wherefore they came again and told him. And he said, this is the word of Yah, which he spoke by his servant Elijah the Tishbite, saying, and the portion of Jezebel shall dogs eat the flesh of Jezebel. And that's what happened to him. And the carcass of Jezebel shall be as dung upon the face of the field in the portion of Jezebel, so that they shall not say, this is Jezebel. So, so we see how Jezebel ended up. But today they'll say, well, that's too, a little bit too much. But I'm going to go to a couple more places. I'm going to go to this lady right here named Athala. She tried to basically usurp the, the kingdom to be queen of Israel. We're going to find out what happened to her. Okay? Let's read this. This is uh, 2 Kings chapter 11. We're going to read probably about the whole chapter. And when Athala, the mother of Ahiazah, saw that her son was dead, she arose and destroyed all the seed royal. So she, she got rid of all the other sons that could have become king because her son was dead. Now, that's, that's dealing with your emotions right there. That's what women do, things like that. Totally emotional. She's going to kill their kids because her kid's dead. How wicked is that? But Jehoshaphat, the daughter of King Joram, sister of Ahiza, took Joseph the son of Ahiza, and stole him from among the king's sons, which were slain. And they hid him, even him and his nurse, in the bedchamber from Athiah, so that he was not slain. So they saved him. And he was with her, hid in the house of Yah six years. And Athiah did reign over the land. And the seven years Jehoiada sent and fetched the rulers over hundreds with the captains of the guard and brought them and brought them to him in the house of Yah and they made a covenant with them and took an oath of them in the house of Yah and showed them the king's son and he commanded them saying this is the thing that you shall do a third part of you that enter in on the Sabbath shall even be keepers of the watch of the king's house and the third part shall be at the gate of Sir and the third part at the gate of behind the guard so shall you keep the watch of the house that it be not broken down and two parts of all you that go forth on the Sabbath, even they shall keep the watch of the house of Yah about the king. And you shall compass the king round about. So they had to protect him. All right. You shall compass the king round about every man with his weapons in his hand. And he that cometh within ranges 
let him be slain. So you see, they weren't playing no games. Anybody that tried to threaten this child, they was going to kill him straight off the off top. So he had, he had to have bodyguards like that because of this wicked woman, okay? And be with ye with the king as he goes forth out and as he come in. And the captains over hundreds did according to all these things that Jehoiada, the priest, commanded. And he took every man, his men that were to come in on the Sabbath, with them that they should go out on the Sabbath, and came to Jehoiada, the priest. And to the captains over hundreds did the priests give kings David spears and shields, and they were in the temple of Yah. And the guard stood, every man with his weapons in his hand, round about the king. From the right corner of the temple to the left corner of the temple, along by the altar and the temple. And he brought forth the king's son and put the crown royal on him and gave him the testimony. And they made him king and anointed him. And they clapped their hands and said, Yahweh saved the king. All right. They was happy because they had a rightful king once again. And when Athiathah heard the noise of the God and of the people, she came to the people in the temple of Yah. And when she looked, behold, the king stood by the pillar as the man it was, and the princes and the trumpets by the king. And all the people of the land rejoiced and blew with their trumpets. And the high and the high the rent her clothes and cried, Treason, treason. This bitch crying treason, treason, because she not gonna be get she not gonna be the queen like she thought she was. She thought she killed all the king's seed, but she didn't. She didn't know that was one left, and now she's talking about treason, treason. Is it this the wickedness of women right here? Many of y'all can relate to this foolishness that they do. But Jehoiada the priest commanded the captains of the hundreds, the officers of the host, and said unto them, Have her forth without the rangers, and him that followeth her, kill with the sword. Now that's key right there. He said, anybody that's following her, kill with the sword. So any man that's trying to help her out, he said, kill them too. Let that be a lesson to you Simpson man Johnners out there, for your fate coming soon. You follow after these women, you may get killed. Keep that in mind. For the priest has said, let her not be slain in the house of Yah. So he said, just don't do it in the temple. And they laid their hands on her, and she went by the way by which the horses came into the king's house, and there was she slain. And Jehoiada made a covenant between Yah and the king and the people, that they should be the most highest people between the king also and all the people. And all the people of the land went to the house of Baal and broke it down. So they broke down that house of altars, all right? His altars and his images, they break in pieces thoroughly and slew Matin, the priest of Baal. That's a false pastor, basically, worshiping the devil before the altars. And the priest appointed officers over the house of the Most High Yah. And he took the rulers over hundreds and captains and the guard and all the people of the land. And they brought down the king from the house and of Yah and from the house of Yah. And they came by the way of the gate of the guard to the king's house. And he sat on the throne of the kings, and all the people of the land rejoiced, and the city was in quiet, and they slew Ahiathah with the sword besides the king's house. So this wicked woman that was trying to usurp the throne of Israel, trying to be the queen, she got killed. That's how they dealt with wicked women back then, okay? They don't deal with women like that today, so these women feel that they're invisible and can do anything they want to, man, or to anybody else and get away with it. And guess what? To a certain degree, they can. Now, we know they're going to have to pay later on. In the spiritual realm, yes, but right now they're riding high, doing all the wickedness they want to do and getting away with it. But we see the Bible has a harsh judgment on, which, on women that does wickedness, okay? Now, I'm going to go to one more place. I'm going to go to Deuteronomy chapter 25, verse 11, all right? Because the day they tell you you're not supposed to put your hand on women no matter what, even if they hit you. They say you're not supposed to hit them even if they hit you. Well, let's see what the Bible say about that. This is Deuteronomy chapter 25. Verse 11, when men strive together, one with another, and the wife of the one draw near for, to deliver her husband out of the hand of him that smite him, and put forth her hand, and take him by the secrets, check this out, verse 12, then thou shalt cut off her hand, thine eye shall not pity her. Did you see that? It said, cut her hand off and have no pity. Is that what they do today? No. No, they don't do that today at all. But the Bible say cut her hand off and had no pity. No woman's supposed to be putting her hands on a man that didn't put their hands on her. That's what the Bible say. But in this sick man, John, the bullshit world we live in today, they can do whatever they want. They can slap men and get away with it, spit on you, get away with it. Mm -hmm. And if you retaliate and protect yourself, 
They'll make you look like the bad guy. Exactly. You know? All right, we're going to go to my brother here, you know, my brother James. He's going to read a couple of things out of Apocrypha in the Bible as well. Yes, sir. I'm going to do this one first. This is Micah 7 and 10. Well, I'm going to start at like number 8 because it's a precept to go back to the same story about Jezebel. But he, he kind of alluded to it. Okay, number verse number 8 says, Rejoice not against me, O my enemy. When I fall, the Most High shall be a light unto me. He said, I will bear the indignation of Yah because I have sinned against him. Until he plead my cause and execute judgment for me, he will bring me forth to the light. And then here go the turn first right here, and it's talking about the same fate of Jezebel. It said, then she, you notice it says she, it specifically says it. Right. She that is my enemy shall see it, and shame shall cover her, which said unto me, where is Yah thy Elohim? My eyes shall behold her now. She is tried, shall be trodden down as the mire or the mud in the streets. So it's basically the same story that you just told. It was just another account of it. The one that you said was more detailed, but it just like basically another out of two or three witnesses. Somebody else saying the same thing happened. And this is Ecclesiastes 8 and 11. One of my favorite verses. And back to what you were saying, like right now y'all living it up. But eventually it's going to come that day that you, the people going to have to pay. It says because sentence against an evil work is not executed speedily. Therefore, the heart of the sons of man is fully set in them to do evil. Which means that people is bold to do whatever right now because there ain't no consequences being carried out on them. When no consequences coming, I ain't going to be so bold. And then, wait a minute, not on what this one got. We want this one. Proverbs 30 and 20. Such is the way of an adulterous woman. She eateth and wipeth her mouth and say, if I have done no wickedness. So we can kind of guess what they talking about she eating. Exactly. For real, yeah. She just wipe her mouth off or wipe her other thing off and say she ain't do nothing wrong. And people is letting that slide these days. Like, right. you look at somebody like Amber Rose and the whole slut walk and all that type of stuff. They saying that it don't matter what the woman do. All that matters is what the guy do. Talking about you come around butt naked and stroll up and down the street with nothing on. And the guy, if a guy say something to you or whatever, then the guy is the one that's in the wrong because you're supposed to have control over yourself. Exactly. Well, you having control over yourself when you put that stuff on. Right. Coming outside looking crazy. And then I got one more verse, which is out of the Apocrypha. Which is like a word of warning for the brothers out here. It says, it's um, Sirach or Ecclesiasticus chapter 30, 42 and it's verse number 12, 13 and 14. It said, behold not everybody's beauty and sit not in the midst of women. For from garments cometh a moth and from women cometh wickedness. That's heavy right there. Yes, sir. That's a heavy weight one right mm -hmm. there. And They'll said, never read that in the church. No, they won't. Never. It says that. Better is the churlishness of a man than a courteous woman. A woman, I say, which bringeth shame and reproach. Wow. And then when you look and see the definition of churlish, it means marked by the lack of civility or graciousness. So it's like you like brutish. Like a man that's like brutish is better than a woman that come to you all talking to you all sweet and nice and kindly and stuff like that. Wow. Just got to be careful for real. Right. Because at the end of the day, in the way that this third thing is set up right now, they on top. So it's yeah. like, it don't matter. Like, whatever we do is going to be magnified a million times versus, well, when they do something, there ain't no consequences. Like, you look at somebody, and not saying that it's right, you look at the people that they trying to mute R. Kelly and against Bill Cosby and all that, but they don't say nothing about these female teachers that's out here having sex with these young boys that's in their classes and stuff like that. Excellent and the same point. thing, it'd be Excellent even point. guys. They be taking up for them like, oh, exactly. come on now, you can't be so hard on the women, right. and da 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 da. But then they they be the main ones to turn around and say that the guy need his head cut off. Exactly. We need his, his stones because his secrets. What well, we just read in the book, he need his secrets <laughs> cut off. <laughs> yeah. But the woman, she don't need nothing. Exactly. Right. They say, oh, she probably nobody. Whatever excuses that they make, it ain't no. If the same, what they say on O'Shea, they say what's good for the goose should be good for the ganda. You know and what I mean? if it ain't, then it don't, they need to shut up about equality. Exactly. If they got one set of rules for them and we got one set of rules for us, then where the equality at? Exactly. You know? Exactly. Yes, sir. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, man, we want to read that, man, and see that the Bible tells you that, you know, it is punishment for women, man. Well, it's definitely. You know, so they, you know, they ride, like, see, he ride, they riding high right now doing all the wickedness they want to do, but Mm -hmm. It's going to be held a petty captain. Almost definitely. It's going to be held a petty captain. Almost definitely. The majority of women, they're not going to make it to the... I mean, a lot of these women ain't going to make it to the kingdom, man. They're, they're really not. You can see it, man. You know, if you read in the Apocrypha of Paul, he say... You see he see women in the lake of fire hanging by their hair. Ooh. You know what I mean? And that shit ain't no joke right there, mm. man. These, these women wicked as hell, doing everything they want to do. Lying and slanting on righteous men, trying exactly. to do the best they could. It's exactly. like this. The more righteous you are as a man... Mm-hmm. 
the more wickedness you receive from women. You're right. You know what I mean? Ain't that shit backwards? But that's it how it is. Baby. When you living in Satan's system, that's how it is. That's what it is. You know, that's what we're living in right now, man. But it's, 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 it's crazy, though, man. You got anything you want to add before we close this out, yeah, man? I just want to say to brothers to just stay strong and just as best you can to stay in this word. Because the more you stay in this word, you'll see what type of people to look out for and you'll see different characteristics. And when you see these characteristics, you'll know to run and make a beeline and get out of there. Exactly. You. Sometimes it ain't about how good somebody look or about how good or none of that stuff. Being people will treat you good in the beginning, too, in order to rope you in. Right. So you just got to stay on your P's and Q's. And the best way to do it, like I remember one time you told me. That one of the brothers said that, you know, like, it's easy to only take, like, one good treatment to turn, like, a strong red pill man right back, back into blue a blue pill, pill beta yeah, man. Exactly. So it's the same way with these scriptures. Like, it only take one person, one event to turn somebody that's strong into the word right back into a reprobate. Exactly. So it's like, you just got to stay strong, just like daily exercise. Right. More important than working out your body. Exactly. Say, body exercise profit a little. Right. But what really profit you is standing in this word right here. So this right here can get you in the kingdom of heaven. That's right. That working out ain't going to get you in the kingdom of heaven. No, indeed. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. But this book will. That's right. And that's why it's so important, man. You know, you got people that read against the Bible, be like, they say the Bible's a white man's book, especially all people, black people say that shit, exactly. man. They don't know, they don't understand what's going on, man. Exactly. They don't know what they, this book right here is a it's book of living water. Book. Right, exactly. I mean, look, look at everything, everything we talk about in the red pill family, mm -hmm. look, look at all these red pill verses in the Bible, exactly. man, that tell you about women. We're going to have to do one when we go through them, too. Yeah, like, all of them. You yeah. know what I mean? Yeah, we do that, man, so yes, we know. Don't give up, man. Don't go hope y'all brothers be encouraged out there. Keep your head up. Most definitely. And may the most high bless y'all. We'll see y'all next time, y'all will. Shalom. Shalom.